Hello and welcome to this free video workshop where you learn how to create and design any size cardigan or vest with your small circular knitting machine with 22 needles. I'm going to take you by the hands and this video is built up in chapters. It's a really step-by-step -step video, but you can skip the chapters. You can see in the left corner where you are in the video now. You can easily skip to the next chapter if you are already familiar with my techniques. Please read the description of this video. There is a lot of helpful information there to find to my other video workshops, for example. They are all free and there are over 70. And please watch the video all the way to the end because then you can see a combination of the things I made. Compilation, I mean, I'm Dutch. I'm so sorry for my English, but I try my best. So please read the description of this video. For the rest, give me a like if you like my free pattern and free workshop. And join my channel because I... I'm constantly working on new designs, so you don't have to think about anything and just follow me. To create your vest, cardigan, whatever, you can knit it with sleeves, without sleeves, short sleeves, long sleeves, any length, short cardigan, short vest, with or without a collar, everything is possible. You need your circular knitting machine with 22 needles, then... I'm using a 5.5 mm hook. It's supposed to be a USA I or 9 hook. Or when you're in the UK, it's a size 5 hook. But when, uh, when you're not sure, I'm using a 5.5 mm hook. Maybe you can find the comparing size on uh, Google. So that's not for crochet. You can crochet, see the end of the video, there's a chapter how to crochet something like a border on the, on the edge, on the bottom. So what we needed during this video, and I will explain, teach you how to use it when you're not familiar with it. So that's that. Then of course your yarn needle, a pair of scissors, and very important, you need craft paper. Uh, graph, um, no, it, yeah, graph paper, it's English, graph paper, it's paper with squares. It doesn't matter if you use big squares or small squares as long as there are squares. And then you are ready to start. So enjoy this video and please uh, watch it completely so you won't miss anything and you finish up with your own design cardigan on your own size so hey yo let's go enjoy this show bye bye calculating how much yarn you need for your project our project our pattern is made out of squares knitted with a circular knitting machine with 22 needles one square is three and three inches, three times three inches. That's 37 feet yarn. When you know how much pixels there is in your pattern, you multiply the amount of pixels with 37 feet yarn needed per pixel. And then you get the total amount yarn you need. This way you can find out how much yarn of every color you need about. And this is how you can calculate the yarn you need. Pixels multiply with 37 feet. Yarn gives you the total amount of yarn in that particular color for that amount of pixels. So... And 
when you want to make a pattern. Now you know that one pixel is three to three inches, so you can calculate how big your project is going to be. For this project, we are going to knit tubes and we are going to close them with the use of the one second remove scrap yarn method as demonstrated in the next chapter of this video. We are going to close the tubes before we are going to join them to each other. And before joining, we are going to clean up all those yarn tails, the beginning and the end tails, by just pulling them from the corner to the inside between the layers with your hook. Pull it to the outside. Make sure that it's really between the layers. And just cut it. Pull at your work and it will disappear between the layers. Do that with all ends of all tubes. Now I'm going to explain to you how you can design your own model by a paper model and a pair of scissors. I made a model containing blocks. Blocks are 17 rows. When you want to knit it in one solid color, that's also no problem, but knit blocks of 17 rows. My tubes, my long tubes are 20 blocks, but you can decide whether you want 18 or 16 or 24 blocks, as long as it's an even amount of blocks. So less blocks will make it shorter. Make sure you always use an even amount of blocks. For the sleeves, you also make tubes with blocks of 17 rows and you can add as much tubes, as many tubes as you like, or you can leave them to make a vest without sleeves or a long sleeve vest. For the collar, you knit one or two tubes containing the same amount blocks you used to knit for the length of your cardigan. It's exactly the same. And you simply join them. When you join them, you will see that it is a fantastic scarf. You can even join three tubes or just use one. But make it as long as the tubes for the length of your project. So you can also use a single one. Before we decide the size of the sleeves, we are joining the side of our cardigan so we can fit with our arm, the armhole, to decide how many blocks our sleeve tubes has to be. For my project, I have made tubes with six blocks. But maybe you want to have eight blocks or maybe you want to have four blocks for tighter sleeves. So everything is possible, but it's going step by step. And then you are going to knit the sleeves. I made sleeves tubes with six blocks and close them the same way. So start knitting long tubes for the color and the length of your project. You can add pairs of tubes for the width. You decide the length and you can add width. You can add sleeves, short sleeves, long sleeves. The length you decide before you start, but the width you can adjust just as the sleeves and the color. You can make a small color or a bigger color with just the same length tubes, the same amount blocks in pairs. So start knitting and cleaning up the edges and then we have to continue joining the tubes to each other. I'm going to cut my model into tubes so you can see how you have to join them.
we start with the long tubes for the length of the cardigan. I'm using six tubes, two times three. And I'm going to join both half, so three tubes to each other into one panel. And I do that with all six tubes. I have two tubes for the color and I'm going to join them also. And as you can see, those are just scarves. For joining into bigger panels, use method two from one of the next chapters, how to join to each other. The sleeves we will knit afterwards after joining it into a vest and we know the size of the sleeves. When you have to knit multiple blocks in the same color, it's handy to have a cheat sheet. So I made one and you can make a print screen. One block is 17 rows, two blocks are 34 rows, three blocks are 51 rows. So I made a quick cheat sheet. You can make a print screen and then you know when you want to knit more blocks in one color how many rows you can knit in just that one solid color. So print screen and let's continue. So for the width of your cardigan and the length, you knit an even amount of tubes containing an even amount of blocks of 17 rows with the use of scrap yarn and close them so for the width you knit 4 6 8 10 the needed amount of tubes when you want to add a uh, border or collar you knit the same length exactly the same tube once twice or three times depending on on how wide you want your color or border to be. For the sleeves, you knit tubes and we are going to add them sideways. So every tube made your uh, cardigan uh, sleeves longer. When you are going to close the sides of the cardigan, you decide how many blocks your sleeve tubes has to be. So depending on how many blocks you knit two, four, six, eight, ten tubes to make the sleeves the length you like. Also always use the scrap yarn method and close the tubes and make sure that you put away all those yarn tails before you start assembling. So let's continue. You have to knit these tubes with the use of scrap yarn. I'm going to demonstrate to you how you can add the scrap yarn and how you can remove it very quick. First, I'm going to start to knit with my scrap yarn a couple of rows. And then I'm going to change to another color of scrap yarn. I'm just cutting my yarn, putting it to the inside between the last and the first needle. And then I take another piece of scrap yarn and put it into my feeder, also between the last and the first needle. Make sure that the tails are long enough to reach the table. And knit one round, so every single needle has to pick the color once. I'm cutting my yarn and putting my tail between the last and the first needle as every tail I have used. And then I'm taking my working yarn. I'm hanging a long piece of thread inside my machine because I'm going to use it to pick up my stitches and do whatever I want to do with them. I'm going to demonstrate to you how I like to close my tube. But first, you have to put your yarn between the last and the first needle. And then you are going to knit. So what have we done? We have 
started with scrap yarn, changed to another color and knit one round with scrap yarn. And now I'm just knitting my desired pattern. That's not interesting because that's for a special project. And now I'm finished. I'm cutting my yarn, a long piece, because I want to use it to close my tube. I'm taking it out of the feeder, between the last and the first needle, again. And then I'm going to put my scrap yarn into my feeder, between the last and the first needle. And I'm going to knit one round. See, just the same place all the time between the last and the first needle. One round, so every needle just picks the yellow color in this case one time. I'm taking it out of the feeder and I'm taking another piece of scrap yarn. And I'm going to knit a couple of rounds with, with the scrap yarn. And after knitting a couple of rounds, there are no rules. I'm just cutting my yarn and knitting until my work drops from the machine. So I'm continue cranking when my yarn runs out until my project comes loose. Now I'm going to demonstrate how I'm going to close the tube. I'm going to close the tubes with the use of my five and a half millimeter crochet hook. It's five and a half millimeter. You can search for your size in your country. Tubes have two ends, the casting on and the casting off end. And we are going to start with the casting off end. I'm turning the inside to the outside and I'm going to show you the last knitted stitches with my working yarn that are captured between the scrap yarn and when you put all those ends to the right you will find your working yarn and you will find those two yarn tails of that single strand row so those three ends we need you see that the working yarn is in the middle and the yarn end closest to you goes into the first stitch we need to close the first pair. So I stick my needle through that last stitch and to the first stitch. Look, the working yarn is in the middle and those two yarn tails are coming out of those two stitches. And when you look at the rest of the stitches, you will see that you can line them up easily into pairs. I'm putting my needles into all the pairs so you can see how it looks, looks like. And this way you can see if you're doing it correct. Because a tube with 22 stitches has 11 pair stitches. So I have to check if I have 11 pair. If not, I made a mistake with picking up those first pair those first two stitches. Now I'm putting my needle into my last pair. Those are next to each other, but also in front of each other. And now I have 11 pairs and I'm ready to close the pairs. So I'm sticking my crochet hook into that first two loops and I'm taking my working yarn and with the hook I'm going to pull the yarn through the two loops and now I've started closing my tube. I'm going to pick up the next pair pulling the yarn through all three loops on my hook. From now on I have 
three loops on my hook every time I'm going to close a pair. And I'm going to close all 11 pairs. And my last stitch. You always end with a pair. And then I'm pulling my yarn another time through that single loop. And the tube is closed. You have the scrap yarn tails on the right. I'm turning so that my working yarn is on the right. And now I'm going to pull out that single row with scrap yarn. That easy and you can lift off the rest and now this side of your tube, the end is closed. And now we have to close the beginning of the tube and that first stitch is a little bit more difficult to find. The hidden stitch is easy to find but most people make the mistake by not searching for it so they look at the loops and they think that this stitch is the first stitch and this is the opposite stitch but it's not you have to look at where your scrap yarn goes through find the first two loops where the yarn ends of the scrap yarn go through and then you will find that the piece closest to you that stitch is a little bit hidden this is the first stitch and the opposite stitch and the the working yarn is in between and when you're not sure you are going to count your 11 pairs again line them up And my last pair, you always end with a pair. And then you continue closing as we did at the end of the tube, exactly the same way. When you are getting used to this, you don't need all those needles anymore. They are just for learning purpose. And sometimes I make also a mistake and I don't end up with a pair. And when I don't end up with a pair, I made a mistake. So I have to undo the closing by just pulling out those stitches and start over again with finding the real first pair. And then you close it the same way. Hello. And welcome to this quick explanation how to join tubes knitted with your circular knitting machine to each other in all possible ways. You can join side to side. You can join end to end. You do that when you want to make a infinity tube, for example. And the last possibility is end to side. So I'm going to show you all three ways to join them. The first variation is end to end. I will demonstrate it to you and explain it with a little drawing. I take two ends of my tubes and I lay them in position. We are going to use V stitches to join the tubes to each other. When you look at your work, you will find just under the edge V-stitches. They are all in one line 
and just next to each other. So you have to find your V stitches one by one. They are all in line, so it's easy to find the top one. On the other end, you are going to find also the V stitches from the right to the left. They are also in line, so it is easy to find them. We are going to join them one by one. So make sure that you understand how to find them. And then we are going to join them to each other like this. We are going to join one V-stitch to one V-stitch. And we repeat that to the end. I'm using a contrasting color so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to find myself the V-stitches. I'm starting with the one that's just at the edge or the corner and I'm picking it up and I'm pulling my yarn through. Then I'm going to the other end and I find my first V-stitch. This one. And I'm going to pull my yarn through also, but not all the way. Make sure you keep a space between the two pieces. And then I'm going to pick up the next V-stitch at the first end. I'm pulling my yarn through, but not all the way. And then the second V-stitch on the other end. And this is basically what we keep repeating. Picking up V-stitches on one side and on the other side. Make sure you don't pull your yarn tight. And you are creating something like bars between the two pieces with your working yarn. And that's okay. Continue picking up those stitches. One by one. And when you're finished or your yarn is a little bit short, you just have to pull at your yarn. And then I have to continue the last few V-stitches. And the ends are joined. And now I'm going to pull at my yarn. And you will see that the ends will be joined very nice you can pull through your yarn all the way i'm pulling it a little bit back because i don't need that much of yarn make sure the tension is right and this is how you join the ends to each other on the inside you have a nice ridge and on the outside it looks as if it is knitted to each other. So when joining ends, just join the V-stitches one by one. The next joining is the joining side to side. We are going to join the sides of our tubes to each other. So I'm picking up my tubes, for example, like this. So we are going to join them in the length. I'm turning my example so it's more uh, clear to see what I'm going to do. And we are going to join the sides of our tubes. And that's very simple. I'm taking my contrasting yarn. We're going to join them like this. So when you put them like this, you will see lines with v-stitches along the edge again those v-stitches and when you line them up pretty it looks like they're just knitted in one line you see those v-stitches they're just one row see it as a rail track and you are going to follow that track 
when you stick your needle in the v-stitches you will find those vertical bars just like in a train track and we are going to use those bars we start joining with picking up one bar and joining it with a bar on the other side and then we pick up pairs we are going to pick up two bars at a time just like the v-stitches but this looks a little bit different and you end sometimes with one pair but i will demonstrate i'm going to stick my needle in the first v and i'm going to find the bar that's basically the back of the v-stitch it's just one yes little piece of yarn then i'm going to stick my needle in the first v-stitch on the other tube and now i keep space in between just as with the ends and i'm going to stick my needle in where it came out those are big holes and i'm going to pick up two bars a time go in where you came out pick up the next two bars make sure you get the vertical bars the right ones not the v-sticks v-stitches go in where you came out pick up the next pair and pair them up don't pull at your yarn that it goes tight because then you cannot see clear what you are doing continue picking up two bars at a time don't skip bars don't go under twice just continue following the rail track picking up the next pair of bars do that as far as possible as long as your tubes are this might look a little bit messy but when you pull at your yarn your tubes will be joined seamless your work will look like as if it is knitted in one piece on both sides so when you join tubes side to side it's usable on two sides it's very simple just pair up the vertical bars under the v-stitches so this is the second option joining sides to sides then we have the last option and that's joining the end to the side i'm going to cut my yarn I'm going to join the end to the side um, using also the contrasting color we want to make it look like this so for that I make a little drawing and explanation and then I will show you how you have to join the end to the side of a tube that is also very simple you already know how to find V stitches and how to find those bars and we are going to combine them so we are going to use the bars at the side and we are going to use the v-stitches at the end we are picking up one v-stitch at a time and we are going one by one all the way on the side we are going to pick up bars first v-stitch one bar second v-stitch two bars first v-stitch one bar second v-stitch two bars so we are going to alternate the bars i'm going to demonstrate picking up the first v-stitch and i'm going to pick up one bar because with every first stitch i pick up one bar Keep space between the tubes. I'm picking up V-stitch number two. And when I'm picking up V-stitch number two, I'm picking up two bars. We are working in a series of two V-stitches. So I'm starting over. The third one is named number one. Picking up one bar. And the next one is number two. And at v-stitch number two i have to pick up two bars one v-stitch one bar second v-stitch two bars 
and continue all the way. You pick up one V-stitch a time and you alternate one bar and two bars. This V-stitch number two, I have to pick up two bars. One. One. Two. Two. One. One. Two. Two. And go as far as possible. And then you just simple pull at your yarn. You can pull at whatever yarn tail you like. And your work will close nice without wrinkles. As if it's knitted together. A little rich on the inside and on the outside. Complete seamless. And this is how you join tubes with the end to the side you join v-stitches two bars alternating one and two we also know how to join the ends of the tubes to each other with the v-stitches and now we know how to join the sides to each other by joining pairs of vertical bars which gives a very nice seamless uh, texture. In the next step, we are going to join the two panels that are supposed to be the vest to each other. You start joining them at the bottom to each other halfway up. That's the back part and you are going to join it using the same method but only halfway up so that the two parts for the fronts are still like that. So join in the middle halfway up. After joining the panels your work will look like this. And now you are going to fold the half over the back like that and now you are going to join from the corner the side up until the arm hole so you can try fitting if you're armhole is big enough so you start joining block per block you can also start higher so you have a split here but you start joining block per block until you reach your armhole and you do the same with the other half and then your basic vest is almost finished so continue joining the sides and then your vest will look like this. Before you are going to finish off those yarn tails, make sure that all seams are nice and even. So make sure that your um, project is completely flat, that there are no bunched up uh, parts like this. Make sure that you have stretched your work that it's completely flat and seamless uh, joined. And then we are going to finish off those yarn tails. I will use another example. Oops, it's very simple. We have those yarn tails. We stick our needle, uh, we stick the tail into our needle. And then we simply are going to join by sticking our needle through the two top stitches 
sometimes it's a bit uneven you can even them just by joining them to each other and make sure you go under two um, two pieces of yarn aside otherwise you get big loops and you don't want that and what i do but you can not the way you like i like to not buy this is the yarn tail I, i like to make a little loop like this i just fold it over make sure that the tail going to the yarn eye is under and then i stick my needle from the back to the front through the loop so the loop is now around my needle coming directly from my work going around the needle and under itself into the eye of the needle i pull the loop close tight around my needle put it to my fingers and then stick the needle through with the yarn tail pull and it's closed this is a knot i use all the time and it get ne never it it won't get um it will stay and then i just simply stick my needle between the two layers let it come into the one with the same color if possible and then pull through and you can cut it and it's finished and you do that with all the yarn tails and then you will see that your work will uh, get more even if you want to add another row of crochet or a border that's possible i will demonstrate to you in the next chapter when your vest is finished you can start adding the border you start joining the border that hangs now as a scarf from the left front or right front all the way up around and down so it, you can make a scarf but you can also attach the scarf which has the exact same amount of blocks but it looks different now you just join it from the bottom to the top and back to the other side and then your color is joined and this is how your vest looks with the color joined and now it's time to join the sleeves so let's continue to the next step in the next step we are going to join the sleeve tubes into a panel afterwards when your cardigan is finished and you think the sleeves are too short you can always add another tube with the know-how you have learned in this complete workshop so, so you are going to make two panels one for every sleeve when the panel is finished and all the yarn tails are um, gone you are going to join the ends of the tube to each of the panel to each other and for that you are going to use method one of the uh, chapter how to join tubes to each other by joining the v-stitches to each other and when you have finished doing that you are going to join the sleeve to your panel because of to your cardigan because you already have an armhole that will fit and you are simply going to oh, using the right colors in front for me you are simply going to join the sleeve to the cardigan tuck uh, away the last yarn tails and your cardigan is finished or maybe you would like to crochet a border or something but that's possible see the next chapters so let's continue joining the sleeves When you are finished you can always crochet a border or edging or a trim to your project 
There are books available with borders and trims, but you can also find them on Google or Pinterest. There are a lot of possibilities you can add. And I'm using my 5.5 mm European size, 5 size UK size or I size from the USA needle. And I'm starting to crochet in the V stitches that you have created when closing the tubes. That's also smoothing the point where we did join the tubes to each other. We are going to crochet along the side also by just using the V stitches that are already there. I'm going to join in the corner stitch my yarn. And now I'm going to crochet one single crochet in every V and I'm also crochet around the yarn tail so that's finished off direct and I'm going to crochet single crochets all the way around one in every V stitch there should be 11 per tube when you use tubes from a 22 needle circular knitting machine but you don't have to count as you can see it's important to make the stitches not too tight When you come to the next tube, just continue making single crochets in every V as if there are no joined tubes, but it's just one tube. As you can see, it's just the same as you would get when you do normally crochet okay you do that all the way around and when you are all the way around you can add whatever edge or trim you like as long as it has a straight edge fringe also very fun so look for nice decorative um, patterns that you can uh, add to your project also when you make a cardigan or a sweater it's nice to finish off like this when you come at the corner you have to go around the corner i'm going to create a fake stitch as if i'm finishing here at the corner Imagine that I've ended here. I'm going to crochet two single crochets in the same stitch. And then you go automatically around the corner and you continue crochet single crochets in every V stitch. So so simple is it to go around the corner in the corner stitch three single crochets do this all the way around and you can stop when you have done one round single crochet but you can also continue with whatever pattern you like i like to crochet something that looks like a fan i don't know the english name but for that I'm going to start with a single crochet, skip one stitch, then five double crochets in the third stitch, skip one 
skip one stitch and then one single crochet and repeat skip one stitch five double crochets in the third stitch And repeat skip one one single crochet continue this all the way around and maybe you have to smuggle at the corners but it's a very nice finishing of of your project please post your design on my social media now you are ready for all kind of projects with your circular knitting machine I have more than 70 free workshops for all kind of different projects. And all those free workshops are for different sizes machines. So check the description of this video for the link to all the workshops in just one list. And add it to your library because I'm adding constantly new projects. So stay updated and join my channel. Please give me a thumb up and feel free to tip me. Check the description of this video for all needed information and more. Stay safe with love from Holland. Bye bye.